Heraclitus once said, there's nothing permanent except change. And certainly that is as true for public relations and the work that we do and the tools that we use in public relations as it is anywhere else in life. So uh, with that in mind, we're going to take a look at um, today. We're going to take a look at social media and emerging technology as it relates to public relations. So first of all, if we just take a look at, at social media, I mean, you can see the development of social media. If we start with, you know, theoretically, the telegraph as the initial way that people could connect via social media and have that immediate exchange all the way up through kind of today, or at least in this in this graphic through 2017, we got up through TikTok. So you see that there's a lot that's happened. But and even though if we and this is a little bit disproportionate. So if we if we were to put this in proportion, it's going to skew the graphic a little bit, but you can see that, you know, if we, for the time, the development of things has, has, in, has, has progressed so quickly in, in modern times that we were constantly changing these things and, and the way that we reach people and the, the uh, channels that we have through which we can reach people. So, um, for example, the Pew uh, Research Foundation did um, uh, a um, study in 2021. They do this regularly. These results of tw from 2021, the percentage of, a, of U.S. adults who say they ever use these types of social media. You can see YouTube and Facebook are obviously at the top there, but we we got Instagram. Instagram, Snapchat, all these things that people are using. And, uh, and so, I mean, there's, there's a lot here. There's, uh, so overall usage in general, if we look at that, you can see that a lot of people are using social media in different, different forms. And if we look at the age breakdown, the different brackets here, we can see that YouTube and Facebook in this study, the same study is where this information comes from, from Pew. Uh, but uh, the, the YouTube and Facebook tend to hit everyone. They have a broad, they hit lots of different age groups, young and old and, and so forth. Snapchat and Instagram tend to skew younger. They tend to have a younger audience and, and older folks tend not to use them as much. And TikTok and Twitter are kind of a mixed bag. You have people of different age ranges, but it tends to skew a little younger, but, but you still have, you're picking up more older people than you would with, uh, with Snapchat and Instagram. But so we see the social media, the different channels are all over the place too, in terms of, um, who's using them, how they're being used, uh, how much they're being used and so forth. So. Um, there's a lot to take in just in that modern social media using technology and things like that. So let's take a look at, at some social network theory, um, what we call social network theory. This is, I mean, which is not a new thing. This was something that was developed um, by studies back in the seventies and has just been kind of, um, the, 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 kind of refined as we've gotten into different what we call social network applications through technology and things. So, uh, but in social network theory, we take a look at five different aspects of it. So uh, the first one is size, which has to do with the quantity of connections in your network. So basically, how many friends do you have? How many followers do you have? How many sus subscribers do you have? Or how many people do you follow and subscribe to? So what's the size of your social network? And then also, what's the quality, though? Not just the quantity, but what's the quality? What's the meaning? meaningfulness of those connections. Do you actually know those people or do you just, you know, click the button so that you're following them and, and they're following you and, or click the button, your friends, you haven't talked to this person in 30 years, but, but, uh, your friends, so to speak on Facebook or whatever. So what's the quality though, and the meaningfulness of those connections. We see this at work in, in social networks like Facebook. You know, people tend to focus on how many friends do you have? What's the quality of, and the meaningfulness? How do you use that social media to enhance the meaningfulness of those connections? Are you using it to stay connected? Are you using it to reach out to people? Or is it just so you can kind of spy on people and see where they're going on vacation and what they're eating and things? So, uh, but what's the, the, both the quantity and the quality of your social network. And so we can see that at work in Facebook as much as anywhere. We also look at things like social distance. So people are more inclined to do favors for those with whom they have close connections. So we can look at, at a network like Indeed, for example. But we know that people are more inclined to do favors for those with whom they have close connections. Um, and even if you, uh, if, if it's sort of a thing where you know someone who knows someone, right? Who knows some, you, you, so through the, Indeed, for example, you can see, do you have a connection with somebody via somebody else? You may not know this person, but, but you may know someone who knows someone and can, can, you know, when that happens, if somebody reaches out to you or you reach out to somebody, you're more inclined to do that than you are for just a random stranger. When you, feel, when you find that you have some connection to that person, uh, and especially the closer that connection, the more likely you are to, um, to, to help with that, 
whatever issue they're working on, right? But that social distance is important. What's your connection? How many degrees of separation are there between you and that other person? And, uh, and that's going to impact how connected you are and how likely you are to, uh, to, to assist them with different things. So, um, but anyway, so the social distance, we can see that at work in social network theory as well. Then finally, the last two aspects are what we call diffusion and complexity, right? So diffusion has to do with how quickly a message spreads. How quickly is this getting around, right? This information spreading. And then complexity, though, really says that the simpler the idea, the faster and wider it will spread, right? So think about things, though, like when you would play tele telephone, you ever played a game of telephone as a kid or, or had information that's gone from one person to the next and gone through that whole chain. And by the time it gets to somebody else, it's totally distorted, right? It's not the same message. It doesn't have the same meaning. So, so we need to look at diffusion. How quickly is that spread? How complex is that message? And how likely is it to get messed up? In this, we look at things like Twitter, right? We look at Twitter as something that's, first of all, it, it really focuses on the simplest ideas, right? You can, you can have a multiple you know, tweet chain or whatever you want to call it, but, uh, but the simpler the idea, that's the whole premise of Twitter. The simply the uh, simpler the idea, and we see that at work there. You're a limited amount of characters, right? With Twitter. So you have, a, you have to get that message out in a condensed form. And the simpler that idea is, the faster and wider it spreads, which is why information spreads like wildfire on Twitter, because it's boiled down to basically its simplest form. Um, so, so it's going to, it's going to uh, see that network diffusion. It's going to, it's going to be really fast to spread because the idea is simpler and it's put in a, in a very simple format in, in a condensed form there. So. Social network theory says that these are the aspects that that kind of govern um, social media and social social network, the, the way communication works and the way messages are spread. So we need to keep that in mind as public relations professionals, that these five elements are really important in using social media to the best of our ability. So we could also then, speaking of that, think about what are some of the different uses for social media? Well, obviously, media relations is one. We have companies that put out and organizations that put out news releases and share information. And, and so they relate to the media. They send it. They connect with different media outlets through social media. And, and so we use social media for media relations to, um, to get a story out there, to shape a story, to connect with the gatekeepers and influencers, right? So media relations is an important aspect of social media as it relates to public relations. We also use it for social influence. We know that people are, you know, we literally have influencers, right? So they're called influencers. So, but we can use this through for social influence. If we can connect the right people, sometimes it's not about how many people you, you get to, to buy into your story. It's having the right people do so, right? Um, so if we get the right people behind it and we get the right people that we can connect with, it, then they can connect with their audience and, and, and have that network diffusion, um, through, through their specific audience. That if that's who we're targeting, that public is who we're targeting. So we need to think about, you know, how can we maximize the social influence here? Social media is also helpful in crisis situations and risk management. Not only can you get information out quickly and have it immediately accessible, but you can kind of use it to shape a story and you can use it to connect directly with your audience and with your public. So um, having that in crisis situations and risk management can be really important for, again, that diffusion of information, um, but also connecting with the right publics and the right audience. So um, we can also use it for corporate social responsibility to further uh, just causes, right? And things that are, that are going to have a positive impact on the world around us. We can use it to enhance our corporate social responsibility and also let people know about it, right? So, um, so there's lots of things that we can use social media for. It can be a really uh, important element for public relations and efforts for any organization. So then it all comes back to, to how do we measure the impact of this? How, when, you know, what's the most appropriate way to measure the effectiveness of social media as part of this campaign. Well, one way to measure is mentions. Again, it's sort of like impressions. When we talk about news media, we talk about impressions. How many people are seeing this? How many people are talking about it? Is this something that's getting retweeted and getting reposted and getting mentioned on, on different uh, areas? Are we getting a lot of mentions out of this? Um, so that's one way we can measure, just straight up quantitatively looking at the, the mentions that you get. We can also look at it in terms of public sentiment. Are we having an impact on, on public sentiment? Are we changing the tone of the conversation? Are we controlling the narrative? Are we really, you know, influencing that, that sentiment around our organization or around this cause or whatever it is? 
Uh, are we are we having an impact there? And how can we measure that sentiment? Uh, uh, we can we can measure reach. Again, kind of it was sort of the same as mentions, but I, how far is this message getting? How broadly are we able to spread this message? And and what's our reach? What what uh, parts of the culture are we really connecting to with this message and are receiving this message? We can look at exposure. You know, all publicity is good publicity, right? As, to, to paraphrase P.T. Barnum, right? So there's no such thing as bad press, right? So are we getting exposure for our cause? Are we getting, again, coming down to mentions, but but also are people becoming more aware and informed about this topic and about, you know, what we want them, are we toward influencing them toward our goal, really? And then engagement. Some organizations do this really well. They, they really engage well with their public and uh, and have the ability to connect with people um, through social media, not just to share message, but understand that it's a two way process. Social media is a two way medium, right? It's a, it's a way to, for us to not only send messages to our public, but also receive them and engage with them so we can measure the impact of that through our are people engaging with us? Are they responding? Are they uh, recommenting on, on our on our posts? Are they, um, you know, really asking questions and, and engaging with us through this form of social media? Are they just, you know, taking it in and and it goes in one ear and out the other, so to speak? But uh, so we can measure that through engagement and how how much our audience is responding and the kind of response that we're getting from them. A few guidelines to keep in mind as we're working with social media. First of all, social media is there is really useful toward telling a story and building a brand. We ought to have some specific idea of how we're going to use this social media. Are we going to be the organization that's really fun and snarky and and has commentary on things and has a sense of humor, or are we going to be more straight up about it? We're going to be with a straight man in terms of um, uh, just sharing information. Are we so so? How are we going to use this platform to build our brand and how does that tie into our overall kind of ethos as an organization? We can also remember that we need to to use the the guideline of a matching a need and a goal with the platform. Right. So um, as we talked about before, not everybody's on different platforms. Some skew younger, some skew older, but also in different demographics, we can see this in the, in the different uh, in the Pew Research. If we go back to that Pew Research that we looked at before, we can look at social media use in 2021 and it tells us some interesting uh, demographic information. For example, Instagram is more likely to be used in Hispanic um, and African-American populations. You see 52 percent of, of people who use social media, 52 percent of Hispanics use Instagram, African-Americans as 49%. So it's really high too. Caucasians dropped down to 35%. So white people don't use Instagram as much as some other uh, groups do. And right? um, the same is very much true with, with WhatsApp, right? The Hispanic use of, of WhatsApp is 46% as opposed to African-American and Caucasian, which are 23 and 16% respectively. So, uh, it, so again, keeping in mind, if you're trying to reach um, Hispanic uh, population with your message, then, you know, Instagram and WhatsApp are going to be really effective for you or more effective than they are if you're trying to reach Caucasians or white people who don't use those apps as much. So you need to find a different way to reach out to those people. In the same way, we look at Indeed and we see that Indeed users, 51% uh, have a bachelor's degree or, or an advanced degree, 28% have some college, only 10% have a, a high school diploma and that's it or less. Right. So um, so trying to reach people with a high school diploma or with who don't even have that level of education. And using um, Indeed is not going to be uh, effective or sorry, not Indeed, I keep saying, LinkedIn. Sorry, you, you know, the app uh, LinkedIn, not Indeed. So LinkedIn, uh, these are the stats we see for that. So if you're using you know, LinkedIn, you want to be sure that you're using the, it for the appropriate audience. Pinterest, same idea. Women use it way more than men. Pinterest is, you know, 46% of women say they use Pinterest, only 16% of men. And next door, for example, if we're trying to reach an urban or suburban or rural communities, urban and, and suburban are much higher than rural. So we just need to know who we're trying to reach and, and then um, match the platform with that. We also need to focus on conversations. Again, as I mentioned, Social media is a two-way medium. So we need to focus on conversations, not just about what information we want to get out there. It's about the conversations that we're having with people around that information. And so we need to be prepared to engage with our audience effectively and have a system in place to do that. We also need to do our research. 
you need to get your facts straight and, and need to know who's using what. And so we need to do our research and make sure that we're on top of things when it comes to social media. And then finally, we need to work the system. We need to remember that, uh, again, research is part of this. So we do our research, then we make a plan. We should have a plan for how we're going to use social media. And then we implement that plan. We evaluate how it went. And we go back to the research. We, we, we go back to this RPIE model, right? For The same is true for social media, that we ought to you know, be, be engaging in every aspect of this process and work the system work that RPI system. Don't just jump in and, and start using social media and see what happens, right? We ought to have a plan. We ought to be doing some research. We ought to plan. We ought to then implement and then evaluate and start it all over again. Okay. So remember this RPIE model is cyclical. It feeds back into itself. So we ought to be constantly updating and adjusting our, our social media uh, plan as we, as we uh, proceed through time. Remember that, uh, again, we go back to that, that, that opening line from Heraclitus that, uh, that, you know, the only thing permanent in life is change. So we ought to be prepared. We know that social media changes on almost daily basis, and we need to adapt and change with it. If you have questions about social media and how, how it's um, used in public relations, how we can best use it, how it functions in public relations, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will can begin to think about social media and its use in public relations, especially in terms of that plan and, and having that plan, knowing that we need to have that plan um, from the outset and not just jump in um, head first and not have any idea what what's coming at us. Okay. So have a plan for social media, understand its role and its function in overall um, success of a public relations campaign in modern times.